Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a laptop all the way from China. This is a Chinese made laptop by a Chinese brand called Vasking. It's called the Kingbook K100. Now does it live up to its name? Well either way it is pink so it's got that going for it. Let's unbox it and see if it survived its long journey all the way from the Far East. Here we've got the sizable box that was sent via express post and appears to not have taken any damage during transit. If any of you want to send me something to review, my shipping address is on screen now and in the description below. So let's cut into the box with our trusty knife and see just how good this budget laptop is. The outer box has a nice product image on the front, very similar to how Apple packaged their devices. For some reason in the top corner there appears to be some grass stains, something smeared on the surface. Lifting off the lid we get our first look at the pink laptop within. It feels very hollow and quite cheap I must say. Digging in further we have the charger which looks to have a Chinese plug on the end, warranty cards, documentation and a webcam privacy cover. Taking our first look at the exterior, it appears and feels like the casing is made entirely from plastic. And opening it up the keyboard looks very cheap. We'll have to see whether it's any good for typing. The hinge does thankfully feel pretty solid, like it'll definitely last a few years. Although the screen doesn't really tilt back that far, which might be annoying to some users. On the back there are some air vents. We'll see exactly what it's like inside later in the video. So let's turn it on and see how it performs. When the power button is pressed we get the Vast King logo on startup. And a few minutes later we're greeted with the Windows 10 first time setup. Once in Windows I first switched the device over to Windows 10 Home Edition as it came pre-installed with Windows 10 S, which is a far more restrictive version of Windows. Essentially you're limited to only using Microsoft Store approved apps and the benefit is apparently better security and improved performance. Thankfully it only takes a few clicks to change it over. So after using this laptop for well over a week, what do I think about it? As far as the build quality goes it feels very flimsy. Sort of like one of those cheap dummy laptops you'd see at Ikea. Both the trackpad and the keyboard are honestly pretty terrible. And quite a few times I'd be clicking on the trackpad and it would actually get stuck. And the typing experience is also pretty bad. The keys feel hollow and it is not a good typing experience. This laptop's marketing was heavily built around it being great for school students. But if you value a good keyboard in your laptop, I would not recommend it for that reason alone. The keys are also very loud, which may actually annoy people around you in a classroom. Voss can claim this laptop has magnificent 1080p screen quality. In reality, it has poor coverage of every major color space. The screen quality is also pretty poor and only has a peak brightness of 250 nits. And the plasticky case really doesn't make it feel all that good and honestly, it doesn't look all that great either. Looks aside, how well does this laptop perform? In the CPU benchmark Cinebench R20 it only reached 81 degrees Celsius under a full sustain load. Pushing the integrated Intel 600 graphics the benchmark Unigen Heaven pushed the integrated GPU to a maximum of 86 degrees with no throttling at all. But it did only score 272. The dual core N4020 CPU without hyperthreading honestly has some pretty woeful performance. And considering this is a laptop being sold in 2021, it's borderline unacceptable. For $429 you can get a much better laptop for your money. The fact that Vasking described the N4020 CPU released in the last quarter of 2019 mind you as the latest and powerful is very misleading. There honestly aren't that many good aspects to this laptop. Apart from the battery life and the fact that it has a 256GB SSD. I was honestly thinking this SSD was going to be pretty slow, one of those EMMC types. But I was surprised to see it actually had pretty decent read and write performance and opening it up it was actually user replaceable sitting in an M2 slot the SATA drive could be totally upgraded and I was really surprised they didn't mention that on their website. This laptop probably feels so cheap and hollow because there is so much unused space inside. The motherboard is also very small and only requires a thin copper block to dissipate heat. The large rubber foot on the base likely helps air flow in through the vents a little bit better as well. If there's one plus side to this very low powered CPU it's that it runs just about as good if not slightly better on the battery. I managed to comfortably game on this for over 4 hours and playing some Age of Empires 2 HD run absolutely flawless. Another game that worked pretty well on here was Gary's Mod. When I lowered the resolution to 720p it was getting around 60 frames per second. So if you want to play some older titles you totally can on a laptop like this. It may or may not run well though. Another game I always try on laptops is Old School RuneScape. 
This simple 3D game runs absolutely great, very playable on this system. Jumping into my Minecraft server, which you can totally join right now, it was okay. It could only reach about 35 frames per second with the render distance set to 8. Not a great experience. Web browsing with many tabs open at once honestly ran great. This included a full HD YouTube video, and I guess the 8GB of RAM likely helped make this possible. If you're only doing light web browsing, this laptop can definitely do that. You'll definitely want to use some headphones, as the sound quality through the built-in speakers is quite tinny. And here's a look at the very small speaker chamber inside, which definitely explains the lack of bass. Breaking the norm from cheap Chinese laptops, there's now a USB-C port. I really do wish there was a full-sized SD card slot instead of the micro one, but hey, that's better than nothing. The bottom line is this laptop does work, but the mediocre screen, keyboard, trackpad and performance for $429 is really not worth it. The Vast King K100 vastly underperforms and with all the marketing hype, leaves you pretty disappointed. Anyway, there's links in the description if you still want to buy one of these. I think I might be giving this away on Twitter because I sure as heck don't have a use for it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've at least found this video entertaining and I'll see you next time with some more retro check related stuff. You have a good one and I'll see you then. Take it easy.